In the shadows of the Andes, where the earth meets the sky, a civilization once flourished, its stories woven into the very fabric of the mountains. Welcome to a tale of gods and mortals, of cities carved from the living rock, and of a legacy that endures beyond the fall of empires, echoing the timeless dance of creation, destruction, and rebirth. This is the saga of the Inca Empire. Dive into the heart of the Andes, where the Inca Empire's creation myth unfolds, a tale woven from the cosmos itself, ordained by the gods. At the center of this captivating narrative stand Manco Capac and Mama Aklo, the divine offspring of Inti, the sun god, destined to shape the destiny of a civilization. The saga begins with Viracocha, the creator deity, who rose from the depths of Lake Titicaca, birthing the sun, stars, and Earth's first giants. Yet, displeased by these initial creations, Viracocha summoned a great flood, sparing only a chosen few to repopulate the world. Amidst this rebirth, Inti, concerned for his human progeny, sent Manco Capac and Mama Aklo to illuminate the darkness. Emerging from Lake Titicaca's sacred waters, they bore a golden staff, a divine tool to mark the birthplace of a great empire. Their odyssey led them to Cusco's Furrow Valley, where the staff sank effortlessly into the earth, signaling the rise of the Incan world. Their divine mandate extended beyond the founding of Cusco, they were to enlighten humanity. Manco Capac introduced the arts of agriculture and construction, while Mama Aklo imparted the skills of weaving and homemaking. Together, they sowed the seeds of Inca society, embedding the harmonious balance between the earth, its people, and the celestial realm. This myth, more than a tale of origin, encapsulates the Inca's profound connection to their environment, their intricate social fabric, and their enduring reverence for the divine. It narrates a civilization's genesis, intertwined with the natural world and sanctioned by the gods, forever etching the Inca's legacy into the mountains and memories of the Andes. Why did Manco Capac and Mama Aklo make terrible stand-up comedians in the Inca Empire? Because every time they tried to tell a joke, the audience said, stick to illuminating the darkness guys. <laughs> The transformation of Cusco from a humble settlement into the splendid capital of the Inca Empire is a tale of visionary leadership, architectural innovation, and deep spiritual significance. Known as Cusco in Quechua, meaning the navel of the world, Cusco was the empire's beating heart, serving as its political, administrative, and spiritual nucleus. Perched in the Andean mountains of present-day Peru, Cusco's strategic placement at approximately 3,400 meters 11,200 feet above sea level was pivotal for several reasons. Its central location within the empire facilitated efficient governance over territories stretching from present-day Colombia to Chile and Argentina. The natural mountainous fortifications protected it against invasions, ensuring the city's safety during conflicts. The fertile valley of Cusco, enhanced by sophisticated aqueducts and terracing, secured a stable food supply for its population. Cusco stood as a testament to the Inca's architectural and engineering brilliance. The fortress temple complex of Sacsayhuaman, with its colossal stones meticulously aligned without mortar, showcased their unparalleled stonemasonry skills. The Temple of the Sun, sheathed in gold, was the spiritual epicenter of the Inca religion, connected by ley lines to other sacred sites, illustrating the empire's spiritual network. The city's layout, designed to mirror a puma, with Sacsayhuaman at the head, embodied the Inca's practice of embedding religious symbolism into the urban fabric. As the residence of the Sapa Inca and the empire's administrative hub, Cusco was the source from which commands were disseminated throughout the empire. It was also the focal point of major religious festivals and rituals, reinforcing the divine legitimacy of the Inca rule and fostering unity among the empire's diverse communities through shared spiritual practices. The prosperity of Cusco was significantly boosted by tributes from across the empire, including gold, textiles, and labor, underpinning its growth and affluence. Moreover, Cusco's design and location were imbued with profound cosmological importance. The Incas revered Cusco as the universe's center, a sacred space where the material and spiritual realms converged. The city served as the hub of a complex network of Sikhs, imaginary lines that divided the empire for both administrative and religious objectives, linking the capital to Huacas across the realm. 
the ascendancy of Cusco as the Inca Empire's core was a deliberate feat, rooted in strategic foresight, architectural grandeur, and a sophisticated grasp of geography and cosmology. Cusco symbolized the pinnacle of Inca authority, a beacon of Andean cosmology, and a living testament to the empire's prowess in organization, architecture, and spirituality. Its enduring legacy continues to fascinate scholars, tourists, and the Inca's descendants. If you love llamas, you gonna love this one. Why did the llama become the star of the comedy scene in Cusco? Because it had the best laminate jokes that kept the whole city laughing. <laughs> Nestled in the rugged Andes, the Inca Empire's agricultural system was a marvel of ancient innovation, masterfully aligned with the challenges of its environment. This intricate network of terraces and irrigation was not merely a means of sustenance, but a testament to the Inca's profound harmony with nature. Let's delve into the ingenuity that underpinned Incan agriculture and its enduring legacy. At the core of this agricultural triumph were the terraces, expertly etched into the mountainsides to transform steep slopes into fertile, arable steps. These terraces combated soil erosion, dramatically increased cultivable land, and introduced advanced drainage systems that safeguarded crops against both waterlogging and frost, seamlessly integrating agriculture into the Andean landscape. The stone walls of these terraces were instrumental in mitigating the harsh mountain temperatures. By day, they absorbed the sun's warmth, which was then gently radiated back during the cool nights, enabling crops to thrive at elevations previously deemed too harsh for agriculture. This ingenious adaptation allowed the Incas to cultivate an impressive array of crops across the empire's diverse ecological zones. A vast network of canals and aqueducts was the lifeline of these terraced farms, meticulously directing water from mountain springs straight to the fields. This irrigation network was crucial, ensuring crops received the water needed to grow across the empire's varied landscapes, from arid highlands to lush valleys. The Inca's agricultural repertoire was vast, encompassing everything from staples like potatoes and maize to quinoa, amaranth, and chili peppers. Such agricultural diversity not only enriched the Incan diet, but also fortified the empire against the risk of famine. Incan farming was a holistic endeavor. Practices like polyculture enhanced soil fertility and maximized yields, reflecting a deep understanding of ecological balance. The War War raised fields, for instance, demonstrated a sophisticated approach to moisture management and frost prevention. Central to the agricultural system was the MITA labor system, a communal effort that underpinned the maintenance of terraces. This collective labor was essential for the empire's ability to support its urban centers, maintain its armies, and conduct religious ceremonies, creating a robust system for managing food surplus and ensuring security in times of scarcity. Agriculture in the Inca Empire was deeply interwoven with cosmology and spirituality. Rituals imploring the gods for bountiful harvests were common, integrating the empire's diverse populace into a unified cultural and religious fabric. Machu Picchu stands as the empire's most iconic legacy, a site where agricultural terraces, urban planning, and religious devotion converge. Similarly, the engineering marvel of Taipan and the strategic might of Sacsayhuaman highlight the Inca's mastery over their environment. The Kapak Man, an extensive road network, symbolizes the connectivity and ambition of the Inca Empire, facilitating trade, military movements, and cultural exchange across vast distances. Today, the terraces remain a living heritage, still cultivated by the Inca's descendants, offering lessons in sustainability and resilience. The Inca Empire's agricultural innovations continue to inspire, demonstrating the timeless value of harmonizing with our environment to foster a sustainable future. Now let's talk about the Inca farmers. Why did the Inca farmer become a famous comedian? Because they had mastered the art of crop humor, always planting seeds of laughter wherever they went. <laughs> the meteoric rise of the Inca Empire, from a modest Andean community to a colossal dominion that stretched across the western length of South America, is a testament to its sophisticated strategies of warfare, diplomacy, and infrastructural mastery. Throughout the 15th and early 16th centuries, the Incas orchestrated a breathtaking expansion, weaving together a tapestry of diverse peoples and landscapes into the largest empire in pre-Columbian America. 
At the core of Inca expansion was a highly organized, professional army, drawing its ranks from across the empire, with elite units often comprising Inca ethnic group members or faithful allied tribes. This formidable force was structured using a decimal system, ensuring swift command and operational efficiency. Leadership played a pivotal role, with the Saba Inca, the emperor, frequently leading campaigns, embodying both divine and earthly authority. This not only bolstered troop morale, but also reinforced the Inca's divine mandate to conquer. The Incan arsenal was diverse, featuring slings, clubs, spears, and bolas, complemented by tactical ingenuity, particularly in utilizing the Andean terrain to their advantage. Before engaging in combat, the Incas preferred diplomacy, offering gifts and alliances to integrate other societies peacefully, thereby expanding their domain without bloodshed. To consolidate their grip on new territories, the Incas employed strategic policies, including taking hostages from local nobility to inculcate Inca allegiance and utilizing their architectural prowess to forge a network of roads, fortresses, and bridges that facilitated rapid troop movement and solidified imperial cohesion. The policy of Mitmakuna, which involved relocating populations, was instrumental in dismantling resistance and disseminating Quechua language and Inca culture further unifying the empire under a common cultural and linguistic banner. Economically, conquered peoples were assimilated into the Inca economy, predominantly through the MITA labor system, which reinforced the interconnectedness of the empire's welfare with the state, ensuring loyalty and a shared sense of purpose among its subjects. Religiously, while the Incas incorporated local deities into their pantheon, they also propagated the worship of Inti, the sun god, and the cult of the Saba Inca, thereby weaving a unified spiritual narrative that acknowledged the empire's diversity yet underscored Inca religious supremacy. Despite the empire's grandeur, it faced logistical challenges due to its sheer size and the rugged Andean geography, necessitating relentless military campaigns to suppress rebellions and maintain sovereignty over its sprawling territories. Venture into a world where the progeny of the sun commanded realms shrouded in enigmatic mists, where streams of gold wove through the land, and divine whispers lingered in every crevice and canyon. Here stood the Inca Empire at the pinnacle of its glory, an empire whose embrace extended from the Pacific's whispering shores to the Andes' towering crests, blanketing the diverse lands of what we now know as Peru, Ecuador, Bolivia, Argentina, Chile, and Colombia. A realm of unmatched wealth where the brilliance of its people shone as brightly as the gold they cherished, and their sovereigns were revered as deities. Yet, beneath the veneer of might and abundance, the harbingers of its demise quietly took root, so not from within but by far-flung invaders driven by insatiable greed, armed with cold steel, and bearing silent, deadly plagues. Before the sails of the Spanish galleons dotted the horizon, the empire was already bleeding from within. A civil war had torn through the heart of the Andes, a bitter struggle for power between two brothers, Atahualpa and Huascar. The sons of the great emperor Huayna Capac were locked in a deadly embrace that weakened the empire's sinews, leaving it vulnerable to the predators waiting in the shadows. The throne, once a symbol of unity and strength, became a prize for which brother turned against brother, and the fate of an empire hung precariously in the balance. As the brothers wore, an invisible harbinger of doom swept through the empire with silent, deadly efficiency. Smallpox, a plague unknown to the New World, ravaged the Inca, claiming lives indiscriminately, including that of Huayna Capac and his chosen heirs. The empire, already reeling from internal strife, was ill-prepared for the calamity that befell it, as the disease laid waste to its population and sowed further discord among its people. It was against this backdrop of turmoil and despair that Francisco Pizarro and his band of conquistadors arrived, hungry for gold and glory. In November 1532, with a mixture of audacity and deceit, they captured Atahualpa, the Inca emperor, in the town of Camarca. Despite being vastly outnumbered, the Spanish used their superior weaponry and tactics to devastating effect, capturing the son's descendant and demanding a king's ransom for his release. Atahualpa, believing gold could buy his freedom, filled a room with treasures beyond the Spaniards' wildest dreams. Yet, his fate was sealed not by the lack of wealth, but by the conquistadors' insatiable greed and betrayal. In 1533, despite the ransom, Atahualpa was executed, a pivotal moment that marked the beginning of the end for the Inca Empire. 
the Spanish, with Manco Inca installed as a puppet ruler, faced little resistance as they marched into Cusco, the heart of the Inca world. But the spirit of the Inca was not so easily quenched. Manco Inca soon turned against his captors, igniting a rebellion that would endure long after his death, a testament to the resilience of a people unwilling to be yoked by foreign invaders. Through years of prolonged resistance, led by valiant leaders like Manco Inca and later Tupac Amaru, the flames of defiance continued to burn brightly in the Andean highlands. However, the Spanish, through a combination of military might, strategic alliances, and the imposition of their colonial rule, gradually extinguished these flames, absorbing the remnants of the once mighty empire into their growing New World dominions. The conquest of the Inca Empire is a tale of tragedy and resilience, of a civilization that soared to incredible heights and faced its demise with unwavering courage. It is a story that reminds us of the fleeting nature of power and the enduring spirit of those who fight to preserve their way of life against all odds. As the sun sets on the Inca Empire, its legacy endures, a poignant reminder of the indomitable will of its people and the timeless allure of their vanished world. Why don't the Incas like Spanish lessons? because they always end up conquistadorable. <laughs> As we conclude our journey through the majestic Indian landscapes, we stand in profound admiration of the Inca Empire's monumental legacy, a civilization that stretches across time, offering wisdom, vision, and a testament to human spirit and ingenuity. This saga, woven into the fabric of history, beckons us to ponder our shared aspirations and challenges, proving that the echoes of ancient empires like the Inca resonate with insights that enlighten, provoke thought, and inspire across the ages. Let us pay tribute to the enduring spirit of the Inca, a civilization marked by its intricate complexity, breathtaking achievements, and the indelible mark it leaves on the tapestry of human history. If this exploration has captivated your imagination, remember to like and subscribe. We're grateful you joined us on this remarkable exploration, delving into the annals of history and celebrating the pinnacle of human endeavor.